Tammy, where the remote? Hey, tell boy, did you take me off mute? Welcome to Old School Tuesday. Turn up. I'm your host, Priscilla Watley, and I am back. I have not been here in so long, but I'm glad to be back on this Tuesday night, the last Tuesday of May. I'm back. I'm here. I know for the Ow. first time. I... <laughs> oh, boy, I already started. There you go. So I'm so glad to be here. Hello, everyone who is watching. I, don't, I know we're going to live my YouTube channel. Oh, I think we're going to live on my Facebook. Hello to everybody's on Facebook, everyone who's on my YouTube channel. Your girl Priscilla is back. I'm here. Hello. Thank you all for sitting there waiting. I think the last time I was on here, I think, uh, so it's been a minute. I, I don't remember. It might have been April. So it's been a good minute since I been, did, did the show. But I however, the test I am That here. was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> But I'm here, Tall Boy, trying to be funny. Uh, I want to thank Tall Boy for doing the introduction for me and telling everybody, you know, I was being on Hollywood. No, I was trying to preserve my voice. As you all know, last Monday night, unfortunately, uh, I lost someone who has been in my life for 35 years, sweet and dear, and very close to me. I lost my mother, Larice Spielberry Watley, and she died at the age of 83. So to right now, I would like to have you talk about if you don't mind real quick, let's have a moment of silence and we will start the show. Without, um, I'm going to just say this real quick. Um, I do not, I was not planning on saying anything, but however, my mom was everything to me that a girl could ask for. Shout out to my family, the Bill Berries, the Watleys, the Horns. I want to shout out to everybody who checked on me throughout the whole entire process. Everybody who texted, everybody who called, everybody who kept texting on me, even to classmates, to, to my mom's classmates, to my cousins, to everybody, to, it, it just, it, it's so, it's been overwhelming. I wanna say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to Tall Boy for checking on the King, you know, continue to do sound check with Mr. Felton and Mr. Michael from Confunction even though I wasn't here, be able to be here doing sound check. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everybody who really checked on me and everything. As I get through this process, this is not an easy process. I'm still going through it and everything, but I'm going I'm to be okay. But so it's going to be fine. And to my family, I love you all. And we're, we're going to get through this. Um, without further ado, I'm not going to keep you guys long, but without further ado, from the one and only, please welcome. Thank you, Tanya. Um, from the one and only, I know you guys are ready, but I'm ready. We gonna do this interview like the old school Tuesday turn up way. So without further ado, please welcome right now, the one and only, my guy, I'm talking about the one and only from Confunction, Mr. Felton. How are you, Mr. Felton? <laughs> I I am blessed. I'm, I'm doing great, great. I'm, 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 my, my sincere condolences for your mother. 
but uh, but thank thank you so much for for allowing us to be on the show here. Thank you, thank you for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yes, I like you know what I like. I like how your backdrop is all black. I one day told me I got to do that. I got to have all black. <laughs> I like, like it looks scary, spooky, but it's cool. It's real cool, spooky, but it's scary, spooky. Like it's like you faint, you go back, you come in. Like, hey. It like it's scary. It's like so crazy. It's, it's, I like it. It's cool. I out of all the artists I've had, I have never seen nothing like. No one came in the way you just you did the way all black background. I love okay. it. I love it. Right. I like that. Yeah. This is the walls of the uh, of my studio here, so that's that, that's the padding. So. Uh... <laughs> It's, it's all, all, all dig quiet in here, so you know. But I'm okay. glad you like it. Uh, yes, yes. How you been? How's everything going? Oh man, um, my dad once told me there are worse things to complain about than being too busy. Ed has been absolutely swamped around here. When, of course, we were finishing up uh, the con the Confunction album that we, you know, we're, we're 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 in the final stages of. of mixing that and getting their final songs together uh mm -hmm. i'm still in the process of finishing up the confunction christmas album uh, that will be out obviously later this year i'm picking final touches on my solo cd uh okay. plus I'm, I'm 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 assisting in writing for a tv show a script for a tv show so it's you know every day it's, it's, it's something new you stay active and you booked and busy you're just busy <laughs> right. Like oh, wait. I'm sorry. And then in between all of that, and then we have the tour. Oh, uh, yes, we're, we're I see. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's 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 gonna be a very busy summer for me. Oh, uh, the forty. It was the fortieth anniversary tour. Is it? Yes. Yes. How? Love. Let me ask you. How does one been in this industry this long? How do you do you ever just sit back and say, man? How did we get? How did we get here? How did I get here? How did God bless me with the gift of talent? All the time, I was uh, talking with Mike the other day. There was um, I'm not where I expected to be. Mm -hmm. I am where I always hoped to be, right? But I was telling Michael that uh, there were several people you know yeah you know, like you know when you see movies about time travel about s some point in your past that you can change right that provides a a little moment there were several in my life you know of course my mother my mother was a music major so of course she she one who got me started music there was a gentleman who um really really inspired me on this specific path because uh the first band i ever played in um was his band. I had just learned, I was just in the middle of learning how to play guitar. And he asked me to play guitar with his group. Um, and then one day we we're going to learn a song. And I, you know, this is my first band. I'm only 16 years old. I don't know the uh, the protocol for how this is supposed to work. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll, uh, here, let, let me sing that one. And he's going, you going to sing that? I'm like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. So he says, why don't you come on over an audition next Saturday? And he only lived two streets over, so I, you know, probably walked over to his house. And that Saturday morning, and I sang there while he played piano. And I sang my heart out, and he said, "Felton, if I were you, I would stick to playing guitar because you'll never ever make it as a singer." <laughs> well, I wasn't going to buy that, so I quit immediately and started my own group. So I really have to thank him for telling me that. Had he not told me that, I would have stuck with him and. We might, I'll be sitting here talking today. The <laughs> second big thing for me was having Michael Cooper ask me to join his group. As, after my group uh, broke up, uh, Michael had heard, you know, I, I, had, I, had, I had done a gig with Project Soul. We were called Project Soul back then. Before, uh, he, he kind of borrowed me for one night to do a, a, a gig. We had been chosen to be the backup band for one night at the Oakland Auditorium for Stax Recording Artists, the Soul Trooper. So Mike had me come along to play additional horns and play additional keyboards. Um, 
But um, Michael asked me what I consider after my group broke up. He, he came over, he showed up at my door. Felt, man, would you consider playing with us? I like, um, I'll think about it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. So, uh, you know, I really have to say thank you to, to those, specifically those uh, those people for, because had those events not happened, I, again, we we might might not be sitting here talking now. Right. So would you say, I know I read somewhere that Confunction, you guys were influenced by the funk legends like James Brown and Sly, the family Stone. And um, how, what was about those legends that like, okay, we gonna go out here and do what they do, but we gonna do it our way. What, drew, what really drew you all in to them? Ah. Sly Stone is from our uh, home city of Vallejo, California. So we were, our, everyone was going to the same junior college uh, in 1970, 71. And our music theory teacher, his name was Mr. Dave Froelich. And he was always going on about his past favorite student, um, Sly Stone. So uh, in addition to appreciating his music that we were hearing on the radio at the time, we got to hear a lot of background music about, about how, you know, Mr. Froelich was his teacher. Uh, mm -hmm. Sly Stone was actually my first concert. So, you know, uh, first, I'm sorry, let me correct that. My first major artist concert, my second one was Tower Power, but uh, um, and then the whole magic of watching that happen on, on stage was, uh, was unbelievable. I mean, man, that just is just, just that energy, you know, uh, mm -hmm. big inspiration. James Brown was different for me because <laughs> when I, I got to go back. How can I put this? The process of a beginning guitar player dissecting what James Brown is doing with his, with all that syncopation and stuff, with the horns and the guitars and stuff. We're talking about a major, a major challenges for someone who's only only been playing guitar for a couple of months. And so mm -hmm. that whole diving into it and that dissecting his music so that we could effectively duplicate it was, you know, inspiring, challenging, but inspiring. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Yeah. And like how when you said Tower of Power, that's funny because I had Lenny Williams on last year. You know, he comes from that group. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he comes from, oh, yeah, Tower of Power. I mean, what do you like? What was it like seeing, you know, just seeing Tower of Power? What made them, you know, when you seen them, do you? Like okay, what was would you what influence did you take to what did what did you take from them that you try to use for yourself or did you take anything, you know, take what they were doing and try to put it for yourself? We, we admired the horn section. You know, we we only had three mm -hmm. horns; they had five. You know, um, <laughs> we were we were we were on a we're on a low budget. You so, so, so we we get it for five guys, right? But their musicianship, their horn arrangements. Um, Mm -hmm. Um, they're on the stage, you know, they, they play a horn part and jump up and sing the background parts, you know, and then all the, I had all this stuff going on. Um, yeah, we borrowed little bits and pieces of everyone that we saw and heard to, mm -hmm. to make our sound, you know, um, and since, um, how can I put this? Since we're not them, uh -huh. it, it's, it's us. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but no. Um, Cause you know, when we were a top 40 man, of course we started off as, as a top 40 man, right? So we were playing a lot of um, um, uh, Tower Power, uh, Mandrill, remember the group Mandrill? Um, we did a lot of Commodores stuff. We did a lot of Ohio players stuff, you know? So we were big fans uh, of, of those groups and I am pretty certain that pretty much every song that we played by, uh, I'm sorry, did I forget to say Fire? Uh, and every song that we played by somebody else became part of our musical repertoire. You know, every mm. every song we learned by someone else was something else new in our library per se that we could go back and 
read later. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm. You know, we were just showing uh, one of your videos, one of you guys' music videos just now. And I wanted to ask you, I was looking at the clothing that you all have on. How did you all pick your sequence? Like, what was you going to wear and everything, especially for this video right here? How did you pick, the you know, what to wear for a concert or to do a live concert? The guy that designed those outfits also designed for Earth, Wind & Fire and the Commodores. His name was right. Bill Whitten. And those outfits mm -hmm. weighed about 15, 20 pounds. I mean, they're so, I mean, once we got that particular outfit for uh -huh. that tour, that's all, we, that's the only outfit we were going <laughs> yeah. that tour. But that's also the reason why we were, so, we were so skinny. After an hour and a half of jumping around the stage wearing that, oh, yeah, we was like, you know, that big, you know. <laughs> Uh, uh but yeah bill wooden absolutely wonderful designer did you guys ever put the means do you guys still have the costumes or did you guys did you, uh, did you guys come I, together and decide let's put it in a museum somewhere the costumes i, uh, I still have all of mine I still have all of mine oh wow yeah. I, of course i oh. i can't i can't fit them you know it was like but oh, yeah, right. that, 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 that that was that was several <clears throat> pounds ago <laughs> right, right. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. And, and you know, I just want to say, just hearing your story and everything, it makes me like. I even I know before you guys was there ever a time that you can honestly look back to say that we were told or were given. You know, it's so many no's that you go through until that door opens up to where you get that yes. Did you go through, how many no's did you go through to, to just to get to yet, to get the yes? Probably the, the biggest heartbreak for us was was after we had moved to Memphis and we were no longer working with the soul children. We, uh, despite the fact that Michael Lewis, our drummer and myself, were, were studio musicians, musicians at Stax Records, we as a band auditioned for Stax and they declined us. You know that was that was that was heartbreaking. But we felt kind of better because about six months later, Sax mm -hmm. Sax went backwards. We're like, oh god, we dodged we yeah, <laughs> we dodged that one. <laughs> we dodged that one. Um, but to be honest. We, we we didn't have that many doors closed to us, you know. Once once we moved to Memphis, there was a pathway of events that some to seem the wrong direction, but it wound up having the right result, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. We were, I'll almost say, tricked into signing a recording contract with a gentleman named Ted Sturgis at a a recording studio called Audio Dimension. Um, however, it was through us signing with him that got assigned to um, Freetone Records. And it was also him that, that, that generated or orchestrated our getting signed to Mercury Records. You know, so it was like, you know, it felt like a detour over here, but that detour over here opened up the path for us to go this way. And uh, so, yeah, I said you know, honestly, I, I I don't I don't remember many setbacks, and it was uh, all a very a very blessed path for us to, you know, to join Mercury Records. I think uh, we and the Barcades got signed almost at the same time, so so now we're we're label mates with uh, uh, Parliament, uh, Cool the Gang. You know, it, it was you know mind-boggling at the time, mind-boggling at the time. Again, like I said, we'd always hoped we would be there, but expectations, no. Mm. But, but so wow, good, everything worked out. Everything worked out. That's usually, that's usually how it goes, though. When you least expect it, yeah. every, that's when it flows. That's when it goes the right way. And y'all killing it on this video, this video right here. Uh, uh, y'all uh, are not. Yeah, same, same designer, by the way. Same yeah. design, designer. Yeah, yeah. 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 this is the 
don't you, but don't you honestly, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know about you, but for me, don't you miss shows like Soul Train? We can go on there and yes. sit there. And, it, I thought I was the only one. Do your music and people see the audience dancing to your music. You could go on there and be, you could come back with it. What? You could go on Soul Train, what? Two times or three times out of a whole year. And it's just like, it's, it's the experience just getting on Soul Train. Acting the fool. How was like, before we go on? How was that for real? How was that for Miss for Mister Mike uh, for Mister Felton? Being on, you remember <laughs> the first time you went on Soul Train? You was like, you probably yes. walked in like, what is this? Uh, uh, yeah, that was that was one of the signs. Probably uh -huh. the the second the second biggest sign for me. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, uh -huh. we're we're on Soul Train, just like all these these famous people that I admire. Uh, oh my God, I'm gonna be on the same show. It was, it was, it was, wow. I, 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 I look at the hair standing up on, hair standing up on my, on my arm right now. Um, so <laughs> exciting. And all the dancers were, were, were so glad to see us and very welcoming. Don Cornelius was just so suave and, and cool, you know, and it was, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. And I say mm -hmm. the second sign, because the first time uh -huh. for me, that was the biggie. And we all got, and everyone band, you know, obviously experienced it at the same time, was our first time hearing ourselves on the radio. Oh. We, mm. are, we were, the way I remember is that we were on our way to a, one of our top 40 gigs, and we heard uh -huh. our song come on the radio, and we were on Interstate 10 heading into New Orleans. Um, and we were driving at that time, I think we had a station wagon that everyone drove in and a, and a big uh, cargo van behind us, you know, hauling the equipment. And we pulled over and just sat there glued to the radio. Oh my God, we are hearing ourselves on the radio for the first time. And th I, that is such a magical sensation. That is wonderful. And when the song was over, um, Jumped out the car and we were jumping around. I'm sure people were driving down there. I was, look, uh, Gladys, look at all those, 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 those crazy Negroes all you know, jumping around. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was nuts. Not crazy Negroes. <laughs> Not crazy Negroes. <laughs> right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> but you, I get it though. I mean, imagine hearing your own self on the radio and you're like, wait a minute, we just recorded this and here we are smacked on the radio. Man, yep. oh my goodness. Yes. It was like that, that, that was, that was, that was like, that felt like the, the sign from above. See, I told you it was going to work out, <laughs> you know. Right, right, the, right. Yes. And, and, yes. and amazing is, it's, to this day, amazing is still the only word I can think of. Mm. No, yeah, that's, that, that is amazing. That's something else I can. I could just imagine what was what was the song you heard on the radio? What was which what was the song? I, I, uh, it was called Click. It's a song that our saxophonist Paul Harrell had written. Uh -huh. um, it was called uh, Click. It was an instrument instrumental song for our first release on uh, Free Tone Records. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you talk about that song now. What was it like hearing? Okay, you had Fee Fun, Chase Me. Do you know? Is it me? Do you know how many times I hear Chase Me in movies all the time? They play it in various movies, and you'll be hearing the beat come in, and you hear Chase Me. <laughs> it be so much, <laughs> and dancing it, bumping it, song like Chase. You be into it. You don't be so watch, but there's so many movies that have that song, Chase Me. And then here come Love's Train. Before we get into uh, Bruno Mars and Ender, Silk Sonic and all them, but it was you all's first. But to have those three songs and have Chase Me all the time play in various, various movies. How do you, what is that moment? Or do, is that when you say, we have arrived? You know, God blessed us. We, we're we here. We You know, we're really here. Uh, honestly, it's almost that same exact feeling of hearing it first time on the radio. You know, to be sitting in a movie theater and your song comes on on the big screen. Uh, that's that's that same magical rush of emotion of hearing on the radio. 
But the additional thing is then I get to watch mm -hmm. the other people's other people's reaction. Too. <laughs> right. So that, that, that's, uh, uh, I'm sorry. You're gonna hear me saying this. Uh, amazing. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm sorry. Right. That's, 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 yeah, we we that's, should. No, I love it. We just gonna keep saying that word. Amazing. We can. We gonna. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. I love it. Yeah. I wish Tawa had like a voice thing. And be like amazing, but he don't have all that. He got all that other <laughs> stuff, but he don't have that one. But we. You know what? We we could do. Maybe we should at the end. We'll have you record and um, say the word amazing, and then use it every time. If time. Right. There you go, Tawa. That's an idea. Yep. Look, you see how I gave it idea? I give a lot of ideas on here, you know, to art. Oh, see? Okay. <laughs> see how he do it? You see, he Boom over down. there. He's getting hit. Uh, <laughs> see how he does me? But no, no. <laughs> but no, I can just imagine you went into the theater and you're like sitting there watching a movie, you're sitting there chilling. Here come, like, oh, wait a minute, that's my phone coming on. You sitting there like, oh, they yeah. bumping it at. And you chase me sitting there coming on. You like, oh, we, you just, but in that minute, if it's been in the theater, and I know for you, you're probably like, man, we, who would have thought we recorded that song years prior to be put in movies, you know, that's out, you know, there's movies that have already come out or, you know, just to see people's reaction and everything like that. I know that's a blessing for you and everything. Uh, it was kind of interesting because I know that in the, in the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, I knew it was in the movie, I just didn't know where. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm sitting here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just, I'm all into the movie, watching Nicolas Cage, and they're doing their thing. And for a moment, I'm all wrapped up in the movie, and I've forgotten that I'm still be listening for the song. So when it comes, I'm like, dang, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, it, it was crazy. I'm, a, I'm my first time doing it. Well, that was my first time. The second time, I had to take someone with me just so I watch their reaction. You know. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Yes. <laughs> but no but love train i mean did you all thought that song would be to where you have a new generation now that's re-recording that's just resample the music and you know and made it more than what it is for the new generation of artists uh I've been doing some, some research on I think this is the first R and B song that's over that's forty years and over mm -hmm. to on 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 it being released the second time goes to number one. I I believe we were the first. There's several pop songs that did that, but I I think the thing behind that is the statement and, and especially the way that, that Bruno Mars and and uh, Anderson Pack, Silk Sonic, um, did it. Their statement is, look folks, this song is 40 years old and it's still cool, it's still relevant, it still, <laughs> it still works, you know? Uh, and of course, being, you know, we are so thankful to them for introducing it to now, to a whole new generation. And, and besides being, abs oh, oh my God, they were absolutely wonderful. Because you know we flew out to Las Vegas to thank them in person for for doing uh, doing the song, um, mm -hmm. so we were in the room waiting for them to show up. Very excited about it happening, you know. Oh, oh my God, yeah, this this this, this is great, you know. And uh, they burst in the room. Bruno Mars drops to his knees and sings, "If I can, <laughs> you let me come on." <laughs> The nicest guys, you know, so you know, uh, very accommodating, you know, very cool. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bruno asked, I mean, guys, serious, dude, hold on, did we do a good job? I'm like, dude, you ask, dude, you asking me, <laughs> I'm like, right? Yes. <laughs> right, <laughs> they yeah. did a damn good job. I, I think they did a wonderful job, yeah, yes, they did an amazing, I like how. Because their style, you know, Bruno, Anderson Pack, and Sidious Silk Sonic in general, is like you get that 70s vibe with, you know, all the songs they done created and everything. You get the vibe that they're bringing and they yeah. pay homage to old school music. And I'm glad they simple. You wanted your song, you know, you guys could function song, Love Train, because that's just another excuse for women to take the panties back off. You know now, but I'm pretty sure back then. But it, I'm just saying now, 
when you listen to it, it's just, it's still, uh, it's still, as we call it, as young people, we call it, it's a bob, it's a hit, it's a vibe, it's a whole feeling, it's everything. It's just lit. Lit, yeah. So it's it's the whole vibe of what the song and everything like that. And they did. That's why I said they did a damn good job. You know, resampling. Okay. It's not too many artists who can really do that, but they did it, and I'm glad they did it. They did it the right way. So I give yes. more props to them. Yes, I, they did I it. The, totally agree. Totally yeah. Agree. But do you see? I I I know you guys got the picture, but honestly. Well, I would love to see uh, you all with them one day at an award show and perform the song with them. I would love to see that. Let's put that in the universe too, okay? <laughs> yes, we should. Let's, let's, we should. Let's we should that put, that, I, it, put, put that out there. Put that in the universe. Any war show or like the American Music Awards or the Grammys next year, have come function and Silk Sonic come together and perform Love Train. I, I think that's a perfect idea. And and, and you know how and Silk perfect Sonic, that would be? Silk Sonic, if you're listening, yeah. pay, 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 pay close attention now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> that would be great. Do you know how I, perfect that would be? Now, that would be history. And that would be magical. Because you only get one time to do it right. But that would be, do it at an award show. BT Wars are coming up. They are coming up next, next month. That would be perfect. I'm just putting it out there, you know. But yeah. not there in the universe. Yeah. Phoenix to existing. So, <laughs> but no, with all your success in the 40 years, my question is what is the secret? What is the secret of being together for 40 years? Hmm. I remember hearing a long time ago that uh, being in a band is like being in a marriage, but without the sex. And <laughs> I thought that that was, that was a very appropriate game because it takes, a, let, let me tell you what works for us, right? Mm -hmm. At what appeared to be a low point for us, was once we had to quit the Soul Church and now we're back to, you know, we're not we're not on tour with the Soul Church anymore. So now mm -hmm. we are now going back to being a top 40 band and doing, you know, and playing clubs and stuff. And we were just right. too stubborn to go home as, as anything less, right? And I think what mm -hmm. was key with us was that at that point, we were dependent on all seven of us just for survival. Mm. Just for survival. No one went out to go get an outside job. We were going to make this music thing work. And it seriously came down to the seven of us working it out make, and making it work. Whatever differences we had, off stage did better. On stage, we need to be a tight, cohesive unit. And uh, once mm -hmm. we started recording it, it was, and, uh, it was about taking the best of what we had, the best of what we learned, the best of what we had absorbed from, like I mentioned before, from every song that we had ever heard or ever took the time to learn how to play and to turn that into something that says can function. And we had some uh, wonderful mm -hmm. help in, uh, in, in from, uh, from our producers and achieving that goal. And so I need to give out a, a shout out to the uh, departed Skip Scarborough, who worked with us on, uh, I think, uh, four or five of, of our gold albums. So we borrowed him for, from the Earth, Wind & Fire camp. You would recognize Mr. Skip Scarborough from songs that he wrote. For instance, Love Ballad by LTD. He wrote that. He wrote uh, Don't Ask My Neighbor by The Emotions. He wrote that. He wrote uh, You Can't Add Love for Earth, Wind & Fire. He wrote uh, Love Holiday. Uh, would you mind if I tell us if I, you know, he wrote that for for I Earth, Wind, Fire? Time. He Good wrote, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he wrote, uh, uh, giving you the best I got for Anita Becker. He wrote Lovely Day for Bill Withers. So he he came in and he, mm -hmm. and he helped guide us along uh, a path. A producer on a record is like uh, anal analogous to the director of a movie, right? So it's through the 
producer's vision or eyes that the sound of the record take, takes place, right? He may not write the songs, mm -hmm. but, but, but we count on his vision to give the public a cohesive, hopefully hit sounding record. And Skip did that for us. You know, when Skip came in to produce our Secrets LP, that helped to give us our, our first number one single, Fun. Uh, yeah, the, the one playing right now. And so, of course, he brought with him his expertise from everyone else that he had been working with, you know. Uh, so we learned a lot about horn arrangements and how to stay focused on, on your sound um, the little range of Messiah, he was, he, he was an amazing, wonderful, peaceful man to work with. Mm -hmm. And we owe a lot to, uh, to him and his expertise. Mm. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that, oh, man. Wow. Ah, a, wow. You run a lot of hits. Uh, now these you outfits here were... These outfits mm -hmm. here that are they're playing out were designed by a guy out of Florida named Michael Braun. Very colorful okay. and uh, I, and yeah, the, and the, yeah, that was our. Uh, there's them glasses. Okay, who's there's idea? Glasses. Who, who are we doing with the glass? Whose idea was that? <laughs> uh Michael Cooper. <laughs> <That's my kid. laughs> Somebody, he, he's he is now playing with them glasses. That's why I was like, okay, whose idea it was with the glasses? I know, I know you've been performing. <laughs> okay, let's just add something in there, a look that's gonna be noticeable for years for a new generation. They don't see it like, oh, what? Well, they ain't really yep. we got it, but the glasses, <laughs> because that's something that's gonna catch your attention real quick. That just caught my attention. Like, okay, what's going on with glasses? What we what, what, what going with that way? <laughs> but I like it. I like it. it makes it stand out more. Who would have thought that he did that? Probably wouldn't think nothing about it. And, it's, and years later, now here we are, 2022, it's, it's something very noticeable, quick and fast when you're watching the video. You can't okay. help but look at the glasses. <laughs> that is so funny. What, what do you give for, for you being in this industry and you've seen everything that's gone on with the music industry? What would your advice be on, what difference have you noticed about the music industry in the direction that is going with the music you like that you know that's out now oh my god how, how much how much time we got uh, uh okay we got, a lot of time. we got a lot of time to be here <laughs> <laughs> okay we got uh, you all night you I, can talk however I, I i think i think you asked what, what advice okay for for those just diving in uh the first basic advice is that it's called the music business for a reason it's not called the music. It's not called the music emotion. It's not called the music game. It is specifically the music business. Um, and if you dive in without getting at least a basic understanding of of, of how of how it works, you'll you'll get chewed up and spit out, mm. flat out, flat out. Um, there were several, several books you know, back in the day I used to recommend. There was, there was one called, uh, I Do Not Work For The Company, but it was, they used to call it the Music Industry Bible called This Business Of Music. Um, of course, there, the, there are dozens more, but you know, for, for any person wanting to get in here, get in that and, and study that, you know, be, be prepared. Um, modern technology has, has come to the point where record companies don't have to spend big budgets on getting recordings done anymore. Mm -hmm. um, um, I remember spending a um, little over $200 an hour at a recording studio to record uh, uh, one album. But now with um, software such as Pro Tools or Logic Pro or Ableton or Reason or to some degree uh, 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 Fruity Loops, people have be begun to create music and improve their sound, develop their their artistry at home. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have to go work out ideas in a $200 an hour 
uh, recording studio, plus paying the engineer, you know, fees. So that saves a lot of time. Um, and the record companies aren't giving out big budgets like that, like, like, like they, uh, they used to. Um, but record companies are, are all about making a prop, uh, a profit, you know, um, mm -hmm. There were some record companies, and Motown, Motown was famous that when they would get in there and spend money on developing the artist, on taking a a business slash personal interest in what the artist looked like on uh, on stage. You know, today it seems I could be wrong. But I doubt it. Uh, <laughs> uh, record <laughs> companies, you know, you're they're expecting you to, to develop that on your own, you know. Mm -hmm. It's almost they are expecting you to come already prepackaged, you know. So to some degree, making the music is making the music is 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 a lot easier and a lot less expensive. What costs more for artists going in is is the package the entire package because it's not just about what you sound like now given given youtube and, and and everything else it is just as important what you look like so record companies expect to have the the, the whole package that would probably yeah. be, be the the biggest differences that I, that i can see do you think like i noticed um like I know I watched Temptations. They use that. They use called artist development and everything. Do you think like now it's lacking in the music industry? You don't see it as much artist development the way we saw it. The way we it was seen, it was being shown back then compared to now. Uh, it is my belief that it is that it is now happening. Like like I was just saying, before it gets to the record companies, it's like. Uh, it feels like mm -hmm. the record company is saying, well, we don't have time to do that. For you to have that look, for you to look professional, mm -hmm. almost needs to be a requirement of you getting signed in the first place. You know, mm -hmm. that's, uh, it, feel, it feels like the record company is saying, when you audition, we're, look, we're looking just as much for that visual thing as, as to what you sound like. They, they are equally important nowadays. You know, um, back in the day, it was, it was far more important because we didn't have access to all of this stuff, to what you sounded like. And, you know, it, mm -hmm. it didn't matter so much to it, you know, what you look like. You were, artists were able to sell a bunch of records and people hadn't, hadn't seen them. Oh, along those lines, good example. Remember the group Change? You know, uh, yeah. had Luther Vandross sing lead vocals? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I hear that song on Sirius XM Radio. Yes, yes. There was no group change. There was no group. Mm. The producers hired mm. whoever they wanted. The producers and the writers hired whoever they wanted to to sing vocals for the song for the day. At the end of the day, they just made up a name and put the record out there. But people never mm. saw what change looked like, so it didn't matter. Wow. Can't get away with that now. <laughs> yeah, no, can't get away no. With oh, that. You, you can't. Millie Vanilli need to think. No, I just. You can't. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's scandalous. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Woo, boy. I remember that when I was a kid. Like, I was like hey, they got up there. They made it sound good. They took that cut, cut off and they were yeah. standing there like, uh, -uh what, what's that? You can't do that no more, that lip thing. And I mean, they still do it, but you can't Millie Vanilli uh, everything. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, I remember, what do you think about, I heard an artist say, now, an old school artist say, she's she uh, was like in a clubhouse a couple months back. I heard her sit there and say something about, um, they asked her about uh, the talent versus the branding. The artists today are so worried about their branding that they're not even paying attention to more. They're not thinking about the more of the talent. Like the talent is not even thought of anymore. Like basically they're not letting the sinking shown or they're not worrying about that. It's more about the branding. And I look at it like, 
Well, I hate to say that. I kind of agree with that. I hate to say that. I kind of do. Because it was a time, because I'm from a 90s. I grew up on a 90s baby. Back then, the 90s, we had the people who actually, you know, have voices who could sing. You don't get that anymore. It's all about branding and everything over your talent. Um, I used to have a theory that, that, that there were, that it takes four things to get a hit for a hit record, right? There's mm -hmm. the talent of the artist. Okay. There's the strength of the song. There's the production and the production of the music and the promotion coming from the record company. And out of those four items, the least important is the talent of the artist. Mm. But why that was, is that, that was my theory. That, okay. Oh, it's because of the same thing. Right, but because the same thing that, 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 that you were just talking about. Branding mm -hmm. is, we are such, we are such a visual media orientated society now. Yeah, the, the the branding has it has to be because you know the first thing that people are going to want to see is what you look like. How are you, you know, and 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 that visual gets into the psyche just as much as as the song that you're hearing. And if you know, and and for some people, it's worked out very well. Then they've got this splashy, colorful, energetic looking video that people will rewind it just to see the video over and over and over and over again. And then mm -hmm. that, you know, and it doesn't matter. No, I, I'm not gonna say it doesn't matter because it still needs to be a strong, a strong song. But mm -hmm. that, but now the visual is so compelling that that, 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 that actually helps sell, sell the record. That works out very well for some, not so well for others. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, uh, let me get your take on digital, digital streaming. You, n now digital. Yeah, there was a time, like I said, I was in part of the 90s where we had to go to Walmart and buy records like on a CD. <laughs> when CD, when you get all the songs, 13 songs, I never forget it. But that will be damn near $20 compared to I can get on iTunes and get a song for $1.29 or 69 cents. Yes, I still I'm still buying music on iTunes. So. What do you think about digital streaming now has changed for the buying, going the route of getting, buying, you know, music and everything? I I miss having a physical thing in my hand that I can take time to to read the liner notes and, 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 yeah, and I, look at the photos and say, oh, who wrote this song? Ooh, who produced this? You know, and if, if, if there's no space, Ooh, who played on this? Wow, wow, you know, I I I miss that, you know. It is my right. personal opinion that the ability to go on to, let's say, um, iTunes or Apple Music, and, mm -hmm. and instead of buying the whole album, pick and choose which songs you want. I think that is. I think that has been a detriment for uh, for album sales. Uh, mm. um, record companies might not be happy about that because it is so much more profitable for record companies to sell the entire album right uh and i think that is as has had a very um yeah i'm going to say a negative effect on how much money the music industry is making uh now when i can't get when I'm traveling, I can't sit at home. Yes, I certainly appreciate the fact that I can stream the song that I want to hear and get that instant gratification of being able to hear that right now. You know, uh, hey, hey, Siri, play so, 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 so. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Siri wasn't talking to you. Hold on, shut up. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that instant gratification. Yeah. My, my, uh, my iPad lit up, huh? Yes, can I help you? Okay. Um, I know we come to the world that now we have to ask Siri. Siri, can you play this? Out? It's funny how we have now come to where Siri, can you play this? Can you do this? When we used to be able to push a, push the button ourselves, and we can do it. That's just called real laziness. But it, I don't have Siri. I, yeah. I can do it myself. I don't have them, but I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but no, it just goes to show you how much 
the me technology for music has changed the digital world and for music has changed over decades and everything like that. It makes you wonder yes. what's gonna be next for the next five to ten years, what's gonna be next? Makes you um, I can't wait to see it. I'm almost scared to see it. So I've got I've got mixed and mixed emotions about mixed emotion about that. You know? <laughs> right. Hopefully right. hopefully hopefully I'll still be around to see it. Right, right. Yes, yes, most definitely. Most definitely, yes. Most definitely, most definitely. But you know what thing I noticed, I'm pretty sure you've seen this during COVID, that's when you were able to have, you know, it brought uh like people like DJ Cassidy and D Nice, they brought that old school feel back with you know past the mic and the verse battles and you had D Nice, he plays the old school music and everything. Could you see you all doing, I know you have guys not have done DJ pass, uh, pass the mic, which I'm still just trying to understand why. Like, how come they ain't had a function? You, you haven't got a phone call yet, haven't you? <laughs> no. You no. got to get, yeah, we got to get you, we got to get you guys on. Obviously, we, we need to put, we need to put that out in the universe too. Okay, I'm just fat. So. We, go ahead and put it, go ahead and put it out. Let's, let's put it out, out there. Yeah, right. shout out to DJ Cassidy. Let's get Confunction on Pass the Mic. We, we gotta we gotta make that happen before this year is up. But yes. I also I, I I like the verse battle. It appears who's battling. Do you watch the verse battles? Because who would you if they allow Confunction to come on? Who would you guys think about battling? That'd be interesting. <laughs> wow. Uh, Hold up. What about sliding the family stone? <laughs> I, I, I'm I, I'm thinking. Tony, 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 uh, Cameo, Marquez. Ow. Yeah, uh, com Commerce, that would be the one. Uh, probably being Ohio a player. Probably being a yeah. uh, the Gap yeah. Band. Huh. The Gap Band. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. Ohio Players. Huh. Yeah, yeah, them Rose too. Rose yeah. Voice. Huh. Yeah, Rose oh, yeah. Voice. Rose, yeah, Rose, Rose was our first major tour. That would that, that 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 would be a lot of fun. Hold up. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> that'd be interesting <laughs> to see all, all do all the seventy bands do a verse battle together. We could do, we got to put that in the atmosphere. I think, okay. you know that's yeah. Come put on, it we atmosphere. need to make this happen. All, Come on, put it up. Make yes, it happen. all seventies bands have a verse battle. There you all the ones we named. Oh, the lie detector you know test department. You are telling the truth. <laughs> yes, yes. Bring Parliament and Funk right on in there, and you know the Commodores. Bring them in there and make a function. And oh, you can't, you can't forget about Lake Slide. Oh, oh. You can't be, you're right. You, you can't be. You're right. You're right. I can't Absolutely forget right. about Lake Slide. That was that was be hot as how we gonna make that. You can't forget about Lake Slide and bring them all in there and just have a verse battle. I think we'd probably be in there a good five hours because y'all got hits for days. We'd probably be in there at uh, least five yeah. to six hours. They both oh, people oh, got oh, uh, young people. Wait a minute, got two more names. Brick, Midnight Star. <gasps> oh. Oh! 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 Hey, let's hear I'm, from I'm the fans. What did they say? Yeah, somebody, okay, so Tanya said, yeah, Lace Line. Oh, wait a minute, somebody said Dance, Dance Band. Dance band, yes. Man, yeah, absolutely. Good friends. If any more else, anybody, uh, the rest of you fans, y'all think of any groups, throw them out there. Just put them out there right now. Now, wait, someone had asked, somebody wants to know who created you guys' steps. I guess they was watching the video. We played a Soul Train and loved the dance, the choreography. Who created the dance moves? Uh, our saxophonist and I did, did most of it. But occasionally we would just, you know, uh occasionally just just together as a group hey what if we just did this move here you know uh for one tour we hired uh, a young lady named flo lyle to do our uh the choreography um between her and a gentleman named winston davis they did the choreography for our candy tour but uh before that you know we you know we pretty much did our own okay yeah yeah Imagine, I'm, I'm being, with <laughs> imagine being at a some oh somebody say oh Tanya said switch how do we switch 
Yes, switch. Yeah. You know what? Oh my God. I was in Atlanta like two weeks ago. And we went, mm -hmm. I went to go see uh, Glenn Jones perform at the City Winery. Guess who I got to meet this guy? I got Tanya Kata. Guess who was sitting right me uh right next right across from me? And Glenn Jones mm -hmm. it talked about it, introduced him. Greg Williams from Switch. Greg, oh, uh, from Switch, keyboard. Yes. Right. Got, to him. got to meet him. Got to yes. meet him. Yes. Yes. Yes, I thought that was I was like that was legendary. I yes, Italian was I got to meet him and everything. I was like Glenn introduced him, said who he was. I'm like, such what what <laughs> like no, but yeah, yeah, I can't wait to get him on here. But that was legendary sitting to him. He was right across from me. That's that's crazy. Right. That, that was crazy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But uh no, imagine no for real, really imagine being at a verse battle and doing those dance moves and <laughs> And doing those dance. <laughs> that was uh, along those lines. Well, it wasn't a versus thing, but but back in uh, two thousand, we had mm -hmm. actually put uh, put together something called United We Funk, and we had the mm -hmm. Gap Band, the Daz Band, um, the Barkays, um and the SOS band, we're, oh, I'm sorry, SOS band. We forgot about, yeah, we forgot about them, SOS. Uh, and we had all five bands on, on stage at the same time. I mm. mean, literally, literally the same time. I mm. mean, we had 24 musicians all on stage and all of us playing each other's music. That was, that was probably the most fun tour uh, that we did, you know. Um, uh, we had an opening song, we actually, had actually even recorded an album, you know, before Roger passed away. He even he was supposed to be part of the tour before he passed away. Uh -huh. But we had an opening song that came from the album, and then the first song on the show is fun, you know. And and for and for those of us who like to show up late, <laughs> if you if you if you showed up late at this concert, let's say twenty minutes, you've missed four hit songs. <laughs> you know, because when we we'd open up with a confunction song, then we'd switch and do a barquet song, then we do an SOS band song, then we do a mm -hmm. dad band song, we do a gap band song, then we start all over again. You know, and and, that, and we were on stage for like two and a half hours. That was that was that was so much fun, you know. So uh uh doing doing a versus thing and and, and have that specific family together again, that that heavenly. That would that'd be So we wonderful. need to take that family you just said and put them on the verse battles together and bring that family back one night only verse battle would bring that back yes. again now oh there you yes. go we gotta put that in this oh, okay now that's perfect that's perfect that's gonna work that's definitely gonna work i was i think we're all gonna be up young people like me we're gonna i don't mind being up late but i see myself good being up for good six a good six hours for this because you know, yeah you we're go. gonna be up late yeah yeah but it's gonna be working it. it's gonna be worth it because women gonna be acting a fool. They gonna be people. You know how people be dressed. They gonna be dressed to the T, like they going somewhere. They gonna be sitting at home watching you guys be drunk, funk the five from the seventies, and <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. So yeah, it's gonna be legendary. Yes, that that that. Now I can see this working. That has to happen. Someone said, someone said, <clears throat> switch switch was a good group, but they didn't have enough hits to battle co-function. Okay. <laughs> hey, that's what someone just said. <laughs> we, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we were blessed. We had, we had four gold albums and a platinum album. So uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know how many Switch had, but <laughs> I, but I don't mind sitting together. The Switch, Switch was and still is one of my favorite groups. So yeah, I would just love to be on the show with them. Right, guys. Okay. So, <clears throat> another fan said. <clears throat> they should do a verse between Confunction and Cameo because the ATL always had you guys battling on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't hear. I, yes, I, I I would keep getting calls and to hear about that. Hey man, man, they, they, they got you guys battling tonight, and, and uh, uh, I don't even know what to say about that. But but I remember doing 
several shows with Cam. Yeah. I remember. Uh, I even I even remember my first time seeing them. We were playing up in Ohio somewhere, and this was early on in the, in our career, and that's when they were still doing. The, uh, I can't remember which song where, where they had. Uh, I think it was their trumpet player pop out of this coffin or something like that. Uh, and uh, I was like, man, these guys off the chain here, man. It was wonderful. Uh, I can still remember our first time performing with with Switch. And mm-hmm. I think um, they'll never be a, uh, uh, was there a, and a, was a, was a, many days have gone by, whatever that song, whatever that song was. And I remember my first time seeing them, they were opening for us somewhere. And I was watching them on the side of the stage. I remember saying, I, I'm, I'm, and they were killing it, kill it out. I remember, whose brilliant idea was it for us to come on behind them? I was like, what, the, what, the, what is this? Um, for me, uh-huh. being, coming from a top 40 band and having all mm-hmm. of these other musicians that I still, had still have that huge admiration almost you know I still a big fan of all the groups that we've had a chance to perform with oh oh and oh oh my god don't let me perform with someone and i used to play their songs on stage oh my god i'm like i'm like a little school kid oh man oh, this is you know. uh, uh-huh. had a chance to finally uh, sh- meet and shake hands with gerald alston from uh from the Manhattans, and I had to I had to thank him personally because, uh, you know, when we used to do uh, uh, Manhattan songs, they 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 tossed that the job of singing his parts over to me. But I learned I learned so much about singing and <laughs> just trying to duplicate what he's doing in records. And again, take it back to, to everything that we learned from playing all the people all the stuff just became just became part of us and i've always been grateful for that and like i said and I, and i'm still a big fan of everyone out here yeah who do you uh who are you listening to now besides silk sonic but who you see like now that you you vibing with the new music or you know the current artists you know you like you know i'm feeling their vibe i like what they bring into the table who do you, i really who do you- like neil I really like oh, yeah. him. Yeah. I, I like I like his um, his arrangements and, and whoever's doing his mixing. Um, I like his general vibe. I'm a big fan of uh, Kim. You know, um, oh, yes. um, young gentleman. I think his name is Kevin Ross. Is that, is that his name? Oh my I, God! I, 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 I met him. I just. I, I just got turned on to him uh, uh, not that long ago. Oh, wait, wait a minute! I gotta go back. I had not, I had not even heard of Anderson Pack until this year, right? And uh-huh. I didn't know about his stuff, so I I got turned on to to, to his music. So now I'm at not Anderson Pack. You got a, you got a new fan, my brother. You know, I mean, so I've been I've been I've been learning. I've been I've been learning. I've been, I've been picking up some new stuff. We got to uh yeah, Innocent Pack is amazing. He's heck of good. And Kevin Ross. We got I, I just met him, um, was it not last Thursday, the Thursday before at the Black Music mm-hmm. Honors. I was there doing the interviews and I got to meet him right there on the red carpet. Then I talked to him during press and got to talk to him and, and he is so down to earth, so sweet, humble, very nice kid. Very oh my god. And actually it's funny because I'm uh I had him to follow we follow each other on Instagram and everything. Yes. yes. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's down to earth. Cool kid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That cool. Yes. Um, somebody said in here in the comments, Tall Boy and oh and oh and Oscar Tuesday turn up put on the verses. We we can't host the verses. That'd be cool, but Tall Boy and I cannot host the verses. <laughs> That'd be dope. Mm-hmm. But I mean what we could do is bring back Mr. Felton, bring back each lead singer from those groups. And we play the music, have a little battle going on here. The old school Tuesday turn up way, that'd be something interesting. I don't know, Top Boy might not be into that. He, he, nah, he, he, nah, it'd be too much for him. Oh. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, with all your sisters, oh and, hell no, okay. <laughs> everything, 
um what do what would what felt we can do the verses like we really can the only problem is everybody gonna want to check so if everybody doesn't want to if they're willing to work with us then by all means Mm -hmm. we can put it on because we can call the sos band felton knows some folks you Mm -hmm. know some folks so we can make it happen count me count me in i'm i'm not it, it, it we 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 be that be will be the biggest. This then this show would be the biggest show for. It's already old school. We pay how many bring all you you artists over here. If for like forget the way they're doing it, we do it the my way, my show way, the old school Tuesday turn up way. That way to we the audience here make comments and we do it. We'll turn it always so it'll be so turned up. Man, we'll shut we'll shut down the YouTube. Man, <laughs> All right. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. But what do you you see your legacy being? Whoa. To some degree, uh, and I'm so thankful for it, it's kind of already been established. Mm-hmm. We've, uh, confunction has been blessed. As, as as can function where several million at, at least five million people know exactly who we are and uh, and I can't tell you how many times uh, people tell me that they have gotten married to or uh, proposed to had babies by you know some <laughs> songs that that I've written and um, and people who are turning their children on to it through our music. And, uh, and now, of course, thanks to Silk Sonic, there's a whole other set of folks here. Which, uh, again, which brings me to that point of they've not brought the song back from 40 years ago, right? Which is huge. Let's just say huge that that's you you know because if you if you think back to when you were a kid do you think you were moving to music from 40 years prior to that no Mm -hmm. i i i doubt it you know and and just that musical statement alone is 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 huge and 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 for me it makes a statement about all of the music from that era you know it's Mm -hmm. it it must be cool. Why are they still sampling it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about you know Silk Sonic specifically, but all the stuff from that area is still being sampled. It's still people still find it hip, it's still cool, still find it relevant. So they're still using it today. There's so many um, old school elements. Uh, um, man, I hear a lot of '70s and '80s. Funk, Ian La La uh, du, uh, uh, du Lupa, you know, and a lot, and a lot of her music got a lot, a lot of throwback to those songs from back then, and then that's mm-hmm. that in and of itself is, is is such a huge legacy, and it feels humbling to be to be part of that, you know, that that's that's the same way I see, for instance. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, how, how, how I, years from now they'll still be known and recognized, you know. Um, and people keep telling me, "Okay, well, wow, you're in that genre. You're in you're in that uh, that club. That, that's, that's such a huge honor to have been part of that with uh, with Confunction. Um, you know, it's um, I'm honored." I'm I'm honored to be part of that. I like it. I love it, man. Everybody's over here lo- loving you and everything like that. I love it. You know, I I, I like that we have something in common. Dula Lupa Lu- uh, Lipa is it Lipa Lupa Lipa Lipa. I like yeah. her song Levitating. I, I love that. Yeah. Ever since yes. I first heard that. <laughs> I love that song. I got the the version. I need you. Come on, dance with me. Oh, 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 o
hater. <laughs> hater. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you don't know nothing about that, so that's a pop song. <laughs> Whatever. It's always that way. But it is always a hater. Anyway, hater. <laughs> but I'm sorry. <laughs> Levitate. Every time I hear it on the radio, I'm bumping because I like the version she did with, you know, the baby, the rapper. And then like the version without him, of course. But it doesn't matter which version. That song is catchy. I remember she did it at the Grammys last year, and I'm sitting there like, all night, all night I need you. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, I thought I was the only I never thought I'd find somebody who was glued to that song. Like, you can't tell me nothing about the song. I could be in the car and hear the song, and I'm sitting here and singing to it. Like, I'm like, I have to yeah. stop, and I just, that's my song. That's, I just love that song. But no, but. I thought it was the only one. I'm glad we felt him. We have something in common. You see, see what I'm saying? See, see, we have that in common. I know we here. We here. Tall boy no being doubt. a hater, but he don't know about that. He don't know nothing about that. <laughs> see, he don't know real good music when you hear it because the beat the is the that, that, that was a lie. Hater, <laughs> 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 the beat in the in the lyrics is. It, 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 I'm telling you, it's off the chain. It's just off the chain. But no, before we. But the interview is over. We're done with the interview, but we're not done yet. Before we go, though, because we get ready to have some fun here, what would you like to uh, tell your fans and all the fans that are watching? Like right now, we have Tanya, my girl Tanya Haley watching, Revis Brown. We got uh, Hit the Spot 106. Well, where's she at? Where's she at? Yeah, we got Hit the Spot uh, uh, 1006 is here. We got we got Mama D is here, Tanya Blazers here. Hello to everyone. Watch oh, Rich Voss from the UK. He's a DJ out there. Um, he's watching right now. He's uh up, man? Tommy Jenkins. Uh Tommy Jenkins is watching. Mama D is here, like I said. Yeah. So we got a lot of people in here watching the show right now. We're live on my YouTube, we're live on my Facebook. But what would you like to tell your fans and where can they find you on social media and everything? Oh, in your upcoming tour. Tell them about that. Let them know what's going on in different wow. states you about to hit up. Let me start by saying that music has been my only source of income since 1972. And to uh, the Confunction fans, to a lesser degree, the, the Felton Pilot fans, to a separate degree, the, the MC Hammer fans from my work with MC Hammer. Uh, I'm offering a very heartfelt thank you. I can uh, tell you how much I appreciate your support and your love and, and, and your being there and the fact of allowing me to share my heart with your hearts. You know, this has been very a very special journey for me and um, thank you for allow, allowing me to be part of, of yours. Um, this Love Train Rewarded Tour is a celebration of the fact that Love Train, we've been talking about, came out 40 years ago, but it only came out as part of an album. It was never a single for us, which is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we wanted to be a single, but um, the record company at that at that point was, I guess, they didn't want to go with a mid tempo song. That I remember, I specifically remember them asking us, "Well, we've got two choices. Do you guys want to put out Miss Got the Body or Love Train?" We're like, uh, "Love Train," and they said, "Great, Miss Got the Body, it is." So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, so why, why is Baba asking us? You know, right. But uh, and that helps that helps sell the album back in those days. Um, but now we get to celebrate the fact it's forty years old. That that is amazing all all by itself. Uh, it it still was. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> the song is still with. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll say yes, because it's obviously it's, it's such a huge part of my life. And I'm so blessed and honored that now it's, you know, all of the United States. The last time, it, what, as two weeks ago, was, it was number one? Damn! That's huge! You know, you know, and, and it's, 
it just continues the honor, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm even more humbled and, and appreciative for that. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So the tour, uh, we've got uh, about 40 dates that started this past weekend here in Atlanta. Yeah, that's it. Um, so we're going to be going uh, all all over the place. Please come on out. Come uh, come visit us. Say hi. Come see the tour. Come see the show. Please come out. We, we, we want to see you. Come on out. I see Wichita, Kansas on there, but not Kansas City, but I see Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> I call it that's as close as Kansas, y'all. I see. That's okay. That's that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I have to go somewhere. That's like it. That's all. I get it. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. You know, I just go. I just come down to Atlanta again and come see you guys. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I ain't ready to tour. <laughs> I read the hell was like do do oh hey they got wish though. I'm cool. <laughs> yes, I got you though. That's cool. That's cool. But we go right now, we gonna go ahead and have some fun with you. We even though we didn't have fun, but we're gonna have more fun. We're gonna do the okay. you know, family feud, you know, with Steve Harvey. But I'm your host, Priscilla Watley, of course. And we're gonna do a sixty you got sixty seconds to answer is you see the little timer down there to answer these 10 quick questions real quick they're coming right at you kind of like steve harvey with family few but it's the old school tuesday turn up way and make it i make it real fun tall boy are you ready all right i'm ready all right let me know when to start oh go Hold on, I'm waiting for the music. Give me one second. Y'all know I'm working behind the scenes because somebody was late, <laughs> but we ain't judging. Who's late? Uh-uh, I was going to tell <laughs> No, no, not, not y'all. Y'all know. Y'all know what it is. So I've been working <laughs> profusely behind the scenes trying to get this stuff right. So just bear with me one second, okay? Okay. I'm about to say, we It wasn't y'all. We, we, uh -huh. we know who it was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We gonna have a okay. talk with him. Oh, okay. Where is your? Where is did your did y'all ever do fines if somebody was late? What was what was that process oh, like? Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. um, back when we were doing our our, our uh, major tour, yes, we did have a fine system. Everyone who was late <laughs> owed five dollars to every person who was on time. And we $5. had. And Has we it, had to... Have y'all raised it up yet? Uh, no. So it's still five dollars. Uh, it's, it's still five. Wait a minute. When we do it, when we do it. But 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 back then we had two timekeepers, and their watches were always synchronized, always right. And we went by their watches. You know, yeah. You know, oh man, well, my watch is that. Don't matter. <laughs> and so there there were our. Uh, we had a triple player back then. His name was Marvin. Marvin won. Got, Marvin got rich off of it. Everybody else is fine. <laughs> fine money. He was always the first person on the bus, and uh, but yeah, that was a, that, that was a, always a challenge. You know, uh, so so you got fined once, and if you're supposed to be on a bus at at 4 a.m., you got fined once at four. You got fined again at 4:15. At 4:30, the bus is leaving. You got to get to the next city on your own. All right, Priscilla. Okay, there you go. Here's the timer starting right. now. Favorite ice cream. Uh, Rocky Road. Favorite dish. Uh, seafood pasta. Favorite movie. The Usual Suspects. Favorite comedian. Uh, uh, Chris Rock. Favorite love song. Oh goodness. <laughs> uh, Love Ballad <laughs> LCD. Favorite color. You said Chris Rock. Blue. Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Chicken or ribs? Ribs. Grits with sugar or grits with salt? Sugar. Name the artist and group you would like to see next. Come on, old school Tuesday turn up. Um, one artist, one group. Artist and group. Uh, 
the audience. Two points for the OJs. All right. Group. I mean, uh, as a group, artists. Um, uh, Neo. Oh, oh, man, that's big. I liked it. That's that's the best. I liked it. Nobody's never said. I love that. I love that. Nobody's never said Neo. I like that. I definitely. I, 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 I gotta work on that. That's gonna be hard. But uh, we can, we can, we gonna make it happen. We can definitely. Make That's it a, happen. a yeah. very, very yes. talented, very uh, underrated young man. Very. Uh, yes. I, I, I love it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Definitely. He's so talented. Do movies. He dances. He sings. I remember when he first came out with his first song. We. He does it all. He's like a triple threat. He. He. Not too yeah. many can do like can do that, but he does it to a T. Yeah, he does it. He kind of, um, I like him, but see, I grew up on Usher, uh, Usher so I grew up on him. So, yeah. Uh, 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 Usher? Usher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Usher. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Look, I, I can explain myself. <laughs> see, on that note, I'm going to go. Uh, but no. But no. Uh, see, 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 this is what happens. Uh, John do a show. Somebody decided to call it. They decide. Oh, let me hang up. Yes, please hang up. But no, no, no. I'm back. Somebody just trying to call it. They got they hung up. But anyway, Tom, is there anything you want to say before we get up out of here? You want to say anything? Just one thing. Well, I got more than one thing. Talk about this right here. Waiting just to dance because I had to pop up. And you, come on, you got this, your velvet jacket okay. on. You got the white shirt with no ascot. Come on, talk to me about it. Uh, during COVID, um, I got very, very creative. I, I started writing multiple songs from, from my, uh, for my CD that I mentioned, mentioned earlier and, um, waiting just to dance was my metaphor for, I'm waiting to get back into the public. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the doors to open again, swing so all back get back to our lives so waiting just to dance i think there's a line there's uh, the, i know uh i think i've seen everything there is to see on my tv uh, it does not used to be my joke i've now seen everything on netflix everything right um uh i know 57 ways of playing solitaire you know and and, and that song was all about <laughs> waiting to get back, waiting for the COVID thing to, to be over with. So it uh, did very well overseas. Uh, got to the top 20 in Canada, England, Italy, Switzerland. So I was uh, very happy about that. So that will be on my upcoming uh, upcoming album. Um, now that you spoke about streaming, um, you've watched everything from Solitary to every Netflix show that was out there. <laughs> What do you think of live streaming? Because you see that this is a new way to connect with your fans um, remotely. I mean, everybody can still be safe. Yes. What, what are your thoughts on live streaming? Um, I'm loving this new technology. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, when it comes time to, for, for instance, uh, I want to do a listening session, you know, and I'm, I'll my, my brother, I will be giving you a call. You know, just, you know, help, help, help me out on that. You know, I, 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 I love it. I love it. You know, I, we can use this to, to to get more people aware and and connect and connect. I'm I'm, lo I'm looking forward to to using it. That's what's up. And then um, I think my last question that I got for you: um, the horns. What made you or what inspired you to pick up an instrument? Because you know, back in the day. You not only had to learn how to dance, pick out the outfits, um, sing, but then you also had to be multi-talented and play multiple instruments. What made you select the instrument that you chose, and what do you think of the arts um, where in the state of um, that it's in right now? So, okay. what made you? So, it's a two-part question. So, what made you pick okay. up the instrument first, and then we'll f pick up the second question when you finish. Uh, the in fifth grade, I wanted. To playing the band and my first instrument of choice was drums right and that lasted for about two weeks and then the teacher said okay well here's, here's the fact folks we have more drummers than we have drummers so we're going to need some volunteers to switch over to to playing trumpet pilot you've just been volunteered <laughs> so i had to oh, give wow. up playing drums 
And so they just threw you. They just threw you out there. They just said you ain't playing the drums no more. You you over here. Right. Right. So you over here playing trumpet. So I, I trumpet was my main instrument up until junior high school. But there was a piano sitting in my house, and I was always ticking around on on the piano. Uh, and my mother asked, uh, "Would you rather play pe- uh, learn how to play piano?" Yes, I want piano lessons. So then I took piano lessons for two years from a young lady named Tanya Erickson, who would drive all the way from San Francisco, thirty five miles across the bay to Vallejo to give me piano lessons. Um, while I was taking piano lessons, I became interested in playing guitar. The young gentleman who my 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 best friend, his name was Alan Gerland, and I met him when I was five years old. You know, when I first moved to California, um, he and I had a, a significant day one Christmas. Right, my family's library was in my bedroom. Right, uh, and I and I loved to read. You know, and I, on, on days when my mother would punch me, she'd be like, "Now go to your room," and I'm like, "Yes, yes, all right, cool." Um, so anyway, I had all of these books that, that I'd been given. One of the books that I was not fond of was called a book called All About Electricity. Meanwhile, Alan's parents, because he was interested in being a musician, they bought him a guitar. And and I'm, I'm like, oh, and I asked my mom, will you buy me a guitar? She said, no, I bought you a trumpet. I'm getting you a piano. I'm not, I'm not buying you a guitar, right? Um, Alan, although he loved, loved music, was not as musically inclined. He was more to electronics. So I had that in mind when I'm gonna give Alan this Christmas special. So I take the book, which was, you know, I'm, I'm, I hate to admit, it was my least favorite book. I'm like, Alan can use this. So I'm walking across the street to give him my book on electronics. He, at the same time, was on his way across the street to give me his guitar. So uh, I wound up being able to play guitar. He wound up later owning his own electronic shop. So, you know, that was a, uh, interesting day in our lives where we help shape each other's destiny. Um, at the time, uh, so in my band, I was playing uh, trumpet, keyboards, and, and guitar. And when I joined Project Soul, they already had a keyboard player, trumpet player, and a guitar player. So I went out and bought a trombone um, just to round out the edges of, uh, uh, round out the, the corners of, of the horn section, give us a horn section like Chicago, another group that we admired. And I started learning each song by ear uh, individually. You know? So um, that became that. And then, of course, once once uh, Synthesizers came out, it was the whole, a whole new world. Okay, so now I can play strings, and now I can play, <laughs> play bass, I can play any, any instrument I want. Um, and an old man moment just kicked in. So, what was your other question? <laughs> uh, the other <laughs> question is, what do you think of, um, I guess, the instruments and music where it is today? Not uh, as far as playing instruments, but uh, Revis had a question. He said, how many instruments do you play? Um, those four are my main instruments. And I used to joke around and say, uh, and people would ask me, what don't I play? And I would just say oboe. You know, <laughs> you know but uh, yeah, <laughs> those are my main four. Uh, keyboards, guitar, trumpet, trombone. That, that, that's 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 the main four. You got gotcha, um, um, So and, what I was saying I, is the, the state of the art of where music is, as far as um, the arts for um, music. What do you think the st- where the art is or where the state is? Because you know, um, quite naturally, our HBCUs they have a a huge appreciation for instruments for the band. But I guess when you look at the middle schools and high schools. What do you what do you think the arts um, are when it comes to um, the band or the music? There was a period of time when they were really taking music out of schools in in general, right? Which I thought was kind of, was was kind kind of sad, right? They were um, as you know, well, yeah. I'm taking it personally. I'm I'm a musician, um, and in terms of today's music, I'm I have to lament the sounds of horns of is like disappearing. You know, um, I I can't think of any. 
I'm sure there are some, but I can't think of any songs in the top 20 over the last couple of years, last couple of years, that have horns in them, you know, um, and that ability to to play them or that, that, that desire to have them on your record is, has gone away and the public, for the moment, seems to have gotten used to it, which is, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll just call it an unfortunate. Um, several years ago, uh, it's, it felt like, and I, and I used to say this in the interviews, that with the uh, advance of, of technology, um, it's been good for some, not good for others, because it has is, is made it easier for me, for instance, to get my recordings done, right? And faster uh, and cleaner, right? Uh, it, is, it has increased my my ability to get done done but i i was raised on recording on tape right recording on tape and no autotune and and the autotune at that time was do it again until you get it right right um and so now with this technology um i can copy and paste a portion of the song from here and put over there, which is a big time saver because back then I used to have to sing it all, all the way through. Um, I think at the point where you're using technology as a replacement for talent, then mediocrity becomes the norm. And then, and then when you have a bunch of mediocre songs out there, the public starts to set that as the norm, you know, and I, I think the music industry, in my opinion, started to take a, a, a serious, what I'm gonna call musical nosedive, where everything was like, oh, yeah, it's starting to sound the same, you know, and uh, because that same technology was available to everyone, and instead of using it as a, as a, I'll, I'll, I'll say a tool to enhance their music, they would just get lazy and just use loops, not in a creative manner, just because they didn't want to take the time to create their own music. And I think you know, music industry took took a little nose out there. But I, but I, I, I got to go back. This this thing with Bruno Mars, and 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 not just because of uh, of Love Strain, but a, a couple of the artists of of the day. Are going back and they're and they and they're recognizing that a specific sound that we had going on back then, it works. It has longevity, you know, and it's not based on just the two bar, four bar, four bar loop. There's musical changes on there. There's dynamics. There's 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 bringing you emotion wise from here to here. There's, there's climaxes in the song. But there's breakdowns, and that's I find that very. Encouraging, so I'm, I'm feeling very positive about music today. It's funny that you said that because I, I don't see any other questions that were missed, but this one came from Tanya Blazer. She said, I wish there were more millennials on here because I have to school them and let them know who made the original Love Train. Do you think Bruno and Silk did it justice? I, I do. I do. Um, I think they... They started off by staying very true to the original. As a matter of fact, the, the, the first time I, I heard it, I didn't hear the the intro. And the first time, the first thing, I, the first part I heard was "Oh, nah, can't say." And and, and <laughs> for a couple of seconds, like I almost thought I was listening to to Michael. And it took me a couple of seconds. Wait, wait, that, that's not Mike. And I and I love the fact that they stay true to the original feeling and the original emotion of the original recording, right? That they, their statement seems to be, see, this is, this, this is where we're starting. We're gonna start you with this plateau right here, which is still a hit song, you know? It's still a strong song, but now we're gonna add our spin to it, you know? If, if we had, it, it seems to me that they were saying that if we had recorded it 40 years ago, this is what we we, we, we would have done to it. And I, I, I love the little twists and turns that they added. Yeah, I, I like the texture of uh, 
both of their voices. I like that. I like what they did with the arrangement, how they break down to the drums right at the beginning of the second verse. Um, I did. They did a very admirable job. I, I love what they did with it. That's what's up. All right, I'm gonna let Priscilla wrap this up. But look, this show was absolutely free. <laughs> Please feel free yes. if you would like. To support Priscilla, uh, hit her on her cash app at Miss Wiley 5 You know she's been doing this. She's not going to ask y'all for no donations, so I'm going to do it because y'all don't understand what it takes to put this show on. So if you guys would like to support Priscilla, by all means, you see the thing at the bottom um, and make a donation if you feel it is in your heart to do so. Um, if not, we thank you for watching and making comments and all that other good stuff. And Felton, man, I appreciate you for being on time more than you know. More <laughs> yeah. than you know. Ow. Uh, and, so. and, and, and let me let me say this. For everyone who is watching, please join me. Give Tallboy a nice round of applause for holding it down here in the background. Great, great job, man. Man, you had no idea what I was doing behind these scenes over here because somebody, uh, I'm just gonna do this. That, that one's for you and you know who it is, but I love you though, you still my dog, but it is what it is. So Priscilla, go ahead, I'm gonna let you go ahead and wrap up with this right now, all right? No, I'm gonna say thank you to Tanya. I love Tanya. I got to meet her when I was in Atlanta for bringing co function here, well, Felton. Mr. Pelton of the function here. Because Hold on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bring him, getting him here and everything, making sure he did a sound check, he did his interview, did an amazing job. But shout out to Mama D. Mama D. Slot Tall Boy, do you see Mama D's comment? I now, see Mama her D, comment. It ain't, mm. You did did you see her comment? She said this is what she said, Felton. I enjoyed the program you shared today. Your interview was amazing. Keep up the good work, Miss uh, W and stop staying away so long, please. Well, y'all have to understand, even Felton knows, you know, it's not me, it's the Felton United, it's just the artists. I have put, when I send out requests, it's up to them to respond. If they don't, they don't. But Mama D, the good news is, you know, I just go ahead and tell them, if God, go ahead and tell Felton why he's here. Old School Tuesday Turn Up will be here all month long for June, until June ends. Yeah, we'll be back next Tuesday with another 70s artist, the one and only Miss Anita Ward will be in the building. Yes, you can ring my bell. Let me stop. I, I need to stop. I just need to stop. She will yeah, be you gotta, you gotta that. call Felton. You gotta call Felton and see if Felton can get some of these people to get on your show because he know the OJs <laughs> and he know Neo. So I mean, you gotta get him on and say, "Hey, no, I'm, I'm just messing with you, Felton. Don't, don't give me that." Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but you know some of these folks that because she is out I here. Uh, Priscilla really is out here, uh, and God's honest truth, she is sending emails. She is consistent. She is persistent, and uh, and that's what a lot of artists have uh, said, that it was her persistency that allowed them or made them want to do the interview um, with her. And now that they have now started to see some of her previous shows, I mean, you didn't know what to expect, but, I mean, you've seen the production, and, and by the time you walk away, you're like, wow, like, this is, I hope you like the production and the whole interview all together, so. Yes. It was wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It was a quite honor. I had a great time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for being here. And yes, uh, felt to tell it to spread the news. You, you be on tour. Hey, y'all stop by over there at Old School Tuesday Turn Up because they turn it all the way up. Let them know. We turn up over here. But no, but thank you, Felton, for being here. Yeah, I know. You know, let them know. We got, got Priscilla over here. You got Tallboy over here. We got it. We like an A-team over here. We just bring it. We bring the funk. We we bring it. And shout out to Tanya, uh, Tanya for bringing you here, getting you here. Shout out to her and everything like that. And, and shout out to everyone watching. I appreciate you all, the Old School T Tuesday Turn Up fans, for watching. Dedicated people who's been watching. We in season two. This is episode 28 tonight. As we said, we'll be back next week with the one and only Miss Anita Ward will be in the building and talk to her. And we're here all month long. So, Mama D, you got your answers. Just your prayers just got answered, girl. I'll be see you'll be seeing me all month long at you. That's what I'm talking about. But I want to thank you all for tuning in, watching tonight's show with the one and only Felton from Confunction. You we funk like Tanya said, Tanya Blazer said, 
what did she say? She said, thank you for making the 70s funky and for coming on and making this show F fun, fun, fun. That's what I'm talking about. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put his too. tour date. So if you guys are in a city near, if this, if this yep. hits one of y'all cities, I'm putting it up there. You, you see it. If you live in one of these places, tell them why they should come to the show, Felton, before Priscilla yeah, closes so. out. I, I, I think the word that you said earlier was lit. Oh, yeah. Yes, we, lit. We, we, we try oh, to light it up as, 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 as good as we truth. can. The lie detector and, said you are telling the truth. Go ahead, brother. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, it's a coin of phrase from the song Michael Cooper wrote. We just have fun, 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 and we uh, we stand there and uh, often say we play every song that we can remember, which at our age not might might not be saying an awful lot, but hey, you know, we do the best we can. There it is, Priscilla. Go ahead and close out. That's what I'm talking about right there. So if he's in y'all city, y'all better go see Cook Function. They doing it up. They, they man, I just, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come see you, Felton. Just just call right. me. Just let me know. You let me know when you come to Kansas City. That way I can give you some barbecue because yeah. you know we know for our barbecue. So I'm gonna hook you up. You oh, know? That, I still owe time. Oh, uh, you have. Us, but I got you. You have said the magic word. You have said, oh, bar I said, the magic you said word. barbecue. Yeah. He said ribs. Oh, right. He he hey. didn't want no chicken. Oh, he wants some hey. ribs. He wants some gates. Ribs. You know, I might go. go, go look, 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 look. Do it again. 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 Oh yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's what that's all I got you. I got you, Felton. I got you. I all got right. you. I got you. Okay. What? Well, all right. Next week, you guys. Old school Tuesday. We'll be back. Be back here. Same time, same place. Eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Seven o'clock p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. With the one and only Nita Ward. You can ring my bell. Yo, we're going to keep it going with the seventies. Ain't that right, Felton? We got to keep it going with the seventies. We're gonna make the seventies. Uh, yes, seventies gonna keep it seventies for a minute. We're gonna be right back here, same time, same place. You do not want to miss it. I have been. I want to thank everyone for watching. I, I loved it. Thank you, Felton, for being here. Top boy, thank you for doing all the production, and everything you do, what you do. I just love it. You know, you just more than my production. I want you guys to know, Top boy is like a big brother to me. He knows that, but. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and everything like that. And she also, finally gives um, me the props. Thank you. <laughs> I'm receiving. I, I do, I do, I do. But honestly, um, to my family, I will see you all this weekend. This Saturday will be my mom's funeral at our church here in Kansas City, Kansas. As I prepare myself for that, but tonight was something felting you brought it and you you kept me laughing you kept the smile on my face and i appreciate that and i love you for that and um don't go we're going to talk to you right behind the scenes real quick and to okay. my family like i said the bilberry family the watley family the horn family we're gonna we're gonna get through this and i'm definitely i'm a strong person i'm a strong woman I'm definitely going to get through this. I want to thank you all for checking in on me. Somebody called in while I was doing the interview. People have been messaging me, so I want to thank you all for checking oh, in on me hey, every no. day. And Tall Boy for checking in on me, too. Okay, Tall <laughs> No, I'm talking about they calling in on the show. Like, oh, hell no. You can't be calling in <laughs> while we in the middle. You know Tuesdays is the day that we No, no, this show. person was from Louisiana. She doesn't know. Oh, She's she an older know. lady. She, she don't know. She don't know. But she hung up so quick. I saw her name come through. That's understandable. It was one of my mama's. Okay, I'm going to give her like, a pass. Cause... You got to give her a pass. She was in Louisiana. So I okay. saw that name pop up. I don't know where she was from. But okay. other than that, to everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you for checking on me. It's, it's been a roller coaster ride. But, you know, at the end of the day, God got me. So I'm going to get through this. And Tom Boy's here. He has me. So he checks on me. So, and all the rest of my family and friends, coworkers, loved ones. Yes. Um, like I said, I will be back here next Tuesday, 7 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Until then, you guys enjoy your Tuesday night. Have a blessed week, a wonderful weekend. And oh, Felton, Father's Day. One more thing with Tom, we forgot Father's Day. Uh, Felton, is anything you want to say about Father's Day? Just get ready to come up real quick before we go. 
Do you think you want to say about it? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I wish you all, all the, the gentlemen out there, Father's Day, and for all the, the mothers who are pulling double duty, happy Father's Day to you too. It's gonna all be, right. It's gonna be blessed. All right. You just heard that right here. Mr. Felton, wishing all you all a happy Father's Day right here on Old School Tuesday Turn Up. I have been your host, Priscilla Watley. You all enjoy your night and take care. Bye bye. I was trying to call me.